All right, we're going to do this example problem from the notes. In this particular situation, the box below is moving with a constant velocity. So we're going to find the force due to friction acting on the box and the normal force acting on the box. To give ourselves, again, a little bit more room, we are going to move to a new slide. So from here, we can see that we've got the force is drawn. We've got that force of pull that was given in the problem at a 30 degree angle and that's at 127 newtons of force. We have a normal force up, friction to the right, gravity pulling downward. First thing we always want to do whenever we solve one of these problems is we have to decide on our positives and negatives. I'm going to say up, to, up is positive, right is positive, down negative, right negative. Now, what we have to do is break any force that's at an angle into its components. We only have one, that is this force of pull right here. So I need to break that up into its X and Y components. So I'm going to have a force of pull in the X direction, right there. And I'm also going to have one in the Y direction that goes upward, right there. Now we can solve for what these are. We have an angle. We know what the hypotenuse is. So I'm going to solve for the x because it comes first in the alphabet for no other reason. It's the adjacent side, which means it's going to be found by using the cosine of the angle, which is 30 degrees. And we have to multiply that by our hypotenuse, which we know is 127 newtons. Since we have our numbers, we can plug in and solve, and we would know that our x is equal to 110 newtons. Now solving for y, y is right here is the opposite side. Because it's the opposite side, it's going to use sine of the angle, 30 degrees. And it's multiplied by our hypotenuse as well, which is 127 newtons. We can plug all that stuff into our calculator, and when we do, we would get that y is 63.5 newtons. All right, the question is asking for the force of friction and the normal force. We'll do left and right stuff first, but you can do this in any order. So I'm going to write my left and right equation. So I look for any arrows that go to the right, that's my positive direction, and that would be force of friction. And now I'm out of arrows that go right, so I'm going to look to any that go left, and that's my x. And because it's going left, that's minus x, and that's got to equal 0. A little bit of algebra has me add x to the other side and tells me that my friction and x are equal. And since I already solved for x in step 3, I know then that my friction must be 110 newtons. So that part is done. Now we have to go to the Y part. In the Y part, I want to look for any arrows that go upward. I've got two of them. I've got normal up, and I've got this Y force going up. That's the Y component of that force of pull. So my normal force is upward, and I've got the force of pull. This is the one that's most commonly missed in this problem, is people forget about that Y. You have to remember that one. Then I take away my downward force, which is gravity. and then that is going to add up to be zero. So the question is asking for the normal force. So to solve for the normal force, I want to add my force of gravity over to the right side of this equation and subtract my y. And from here, I can plug in my normal force is equal to the mass of this object times 9.8 minus the y, which we found up here as 63.5 newtons. So now we need the mass of this object, which was given in the problem. You forget. Let's jump right back here. Mass is given right here at 20 kilograms. Always good to know. So we can plug that number in. F of n equals 20 kilograms times 
meters per second squared minus the 63.5 newtons. And when I plug that all in to my calculator, I get that my normal force is 132.5 newtons. So our friction is 110, our normal force is 132.5, and don't forget, you got to remember that Y, most common mistake in these problems, people forget that this Y is pulling upward. And this problem is done.